Hey guys, I have a little equation here. I'm trying to build up to the level of equation, you're going to see that you need to solve for the GED. Um, but in a few ways, it is GED like. Well, we've got more than one step. Um, as you can see, this letter X here is not all by itself on its side of the equal sign. There's a couple of numbers to get rid of. So that's what I mean by more than one step. Um, another way it's like the GED is that. Uh, throwing fractions at you to try to freak you out. So don't freak out, get armed with your calculator. You can use the TI to deal with the fraction, but you have to be the algebra ninja who knows inverses. Remember that we solve, we isolate variables. We get them alone on their side of the equation by doing the opposite or inverse operation. So here we go, let's give it a try. So I'll remind you that when we're simplifying, we work the order of operations forward. We do groupings and exponents, then multiplication and uh, division, and finally addition and subtraction. That's when we're simplifying. But we're not simplifying here. We're undoing math. We're doing the opposite of what we've been told. We're solving. And when you're solving, you work the order of operations backwards. So it's super important that the, what you get rid of first is anything adding or subtracting. And so a lot of students who do this problem wrong do the wrong thing first, and it leads to a very weird answer. So I see that this 5 here has a minus sign between it and the x. That 5 is subtracting with x. That's what I should get rid of first. So I'm going to get rid of it by doing the opposite. The opposite of subtracting 5 is adding 5. Now, literally, we can do whatever we want to an equation as long as we do it to both sides. So if I add 5 on the left-hand side, I'm going to jump across the equal sign. I'm going to add 5 on the right-hand side as well. And let's see what our new equivalent equation will be. So take a look at this left-hand side. Subtracting 5 and adding 5 are inverses. They're opposites, so they cancel. And what I'm left with now is 2 thirds x. And on that side, 9 plus 5, of course, is 14. I just do the math that I said I would do. And now my equation is one step simpler, but it isn't solved yet because x is not alone. We've got to get x alone. Now there's actually three different ways I know of to move x right now. So I need you not to stress about, um, I didn't see it her way. Or, um, but one of the ways I know, whenever I have a fraction as a multiplier, I know a trick to get rid of it. Okay, and here's my trick. My trick is known as the reciprocal of a fraction. And this works because the reciprocal is the opposite of a fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this entire left-hand side, and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Now, the reciprocal is just a flip of a fraction. So whatever was in the denominator is going to come up here in the numerator. And whatever was in the numerator is going to come down there in the denominator. It's the fraction's reciprocal, or flip. And this works because it's the exact that opposite. You know that when you're multiplying with a fraction, the number on top of the fraction is the one multiplying, but the number on the bottom is more like a divider. And so I'm flipping this up. Now, the 3 on the top will cancel with the 3 on the bottom. The 2 on the bottom will cancel with the 2 on the top. And so it will cancel out just like I want. Okay. Now, I can do anything I want in algebra as long as I do it to both sides. So I'm going to hop across my equal sign, and I'm going to multiply this by that same reciprocal, 3 halves. Okay, now let's see what happens. So 3 in the numerator cancels with the 3 in the denominator. A 2 up here in this numerator cancels with the 2 in the denominator, and I am left with an x all by itself, isolated, just like I wanted. And on this side, these are some fractions to multiply. Now you could do this in your calculator, 14 times 3 halves. You'll see it's a nice, easy answer, but this one's easy for me to do uh, by hand. I'll cross-reduce when I'm multiplying fractions. So both 14 and 2 are divisible by 2, so I get a 1 here and I get a 7 there, and then I just multiply straight across. 7 times 3 is 21, and 1 times 1 is 1, but I don't really care of a bottom of 1, so I'm not going to write about it. A denominator of 1 doesn't do anything, so x is equal to 21, and that is my final answer. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.